What do you think has been the most like radical change in distribution since you've been in the business? I think the the move from TVOD to AVOD is probably the largest. Wow. Okay. Uh, I th and and I think that um, the concept in in the past was to have a domestic distributor mm -hmm. and then a sale separate foreign sales agent. You know, for foreign sales. Mm -hmm. And I think that is probably maybe just as important a change in the industry overall, you know, as, as the type, how people are watching, you know, the where people are watching is just as important. And so now uh, it was always very common, uh, you know, for even, I think even companies like say like Gravitas still take just domestic rights sometimes. Right. Yeah. And they don't take foreign rights. Well, all the, this is something filmmakers have to think about when they're considering who they're going to work with. Very, very important because if you, and recently it, and, and, and it's unfortunate, but we've had several people come to us with fabulous films and that we really wanted. And then they say, Oh, I already have domestic. I just need foreign. And I'm like, Oh no. <laughs> and there's no getting out of that. Once you, if you sign with a, a domestic distribution deal, you're stuck there for however long you sign for. And some of them are still asking for 10, 15 years. True. Right? Yeah. Now all of a sudden, they are only putting your content domestically when the whole rest of the world is out there and now accessible. <laughs> right? So, so that's a huge change. That's a really huge change. And so we, I would say, but I think it's, I think four years ago, we switched from being non-exclusive, you know, to being globally exclusive. Mm -hmm. And that, that's why we did this because we wanted the ability and that's an advantage to the filmmaker, not a disadvantage, you know, and, and it, and it came about first of all with Amazon because Amazon offered us to be global. Hmm. And, and so we all, you know, it, but we could only do that if we had the rights. You know? Right. So. You know, uh, speaking of global, I have kind of a specific question about, um, so if you had a English speaking, uh, English language film, mm -hmm. um, do you think that it's, uh, you know, generally speaking, worth it for the filmmakers to invest in foreign subtitles for the different languages for streaming? Okay. Um, the easy answer to that is that if you are interested in that, I would only, there's only two languages I would do. I would, there's 68 English speaking channels. There's 30 French speaking uh, countries rather, not channels, countries. <laughs> and uh, so I, I had no idea that France was so dominated the world at one point, but there are many, many, 30 countries that French is still the primary language and then Spanish another 22. So that's like, if just getting those two language subtitles and they're cheap, it's a couple hundred bucks now, mm. right? On Rev, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you can greatly expand your territorial reach. And right. other countries are very used to uh, subtitles because mm -hmm. America used to produce all the content. <laughs> Right, we had a we had a real lock on it for a long time, you know, with our six major studios, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, who are now all of a sudden not quite so important as they used to be. 